Okay, today we're going to talk about quilt bends. Um, because I'm getting ready to send out a class pack with a bunch of feathers in it uh, for kids to try. Kids love quilt pens. They love the feathers particularly. Um, it's a very um, fun tool because it's soft and it's pretty and we are fascinated by the designs. But, um, and look at how pretty these are, these quilt pens with their tips and stuff. Um, kids like cool tools, so I like sharing them with them because then it gets them excited about learning. And this is a great lesson to tie into history or geography or any kind of a thing where you're talking about even science because of the way cohesion works and keeping the ink in the pen and stuff is amazing um, because they will learn to not hold the pen up so like it acts like a bowl and a spoon but to turn it over and allow the ink to flow out and um, so you can tie that into a science lesson really easily also. Um, so today we're not really going to talk about the pen so much as we're going to talk about the feathers. Keep this quick. Um, these are, this is a partridge feather and this is a turkey feather. And then I have some craft feathers here. I like feathers of different sizes and different colors because it's fascinating for the kids. All I did was snap these with the pair of scissors on a diagonal. Sometimes this little quill end splits. Um, if it's got a couple splits in it, it can make a cool line. So it doesn't really matter. Um, but let's try a few of these. The setup I like when I do um, classroom situations is I like to have these little cups or something similar and put enough ink in there um, in order to um, not have it spill but be easy for the quill to go in and out of. The um, This is ink, um, the traditional um, India ink. These are liquid watercolors, which makes it great in a classroom situation because they're much easier to clean up. You don't need much, and I don't know if you can see this yellow, but I'm not going to draw with it because it's hard to see on the video, but they really don't need a lot, but they need a little bit more than this because you got to be able to get the quilt in there. Even though they might not use all the ink, you can always uh, retrieve it later and put it back in the bottle. So we're going to give this a try um, with this particular pen when I wrote with it, um, or when I cut it, it kind of split, so I wanted to make sure it would work. But you can see that the ink is in the end of this which means to me it's probably going to make a good mark. And really that's all we want to do in the beginning. We just want kids to make a good mark, um, learning how to keep it flowing, learning that they have to redip often, that it's not the same as a pen that um, has the ink inside of it, that they have to redip. A lot of times kids will be like, oh, I hate the noise, it's scratchy. We'll just tell them not to push so hard that it isn't going to make the scratchy noise if they're gentle. It doesn't require you pushing hard to get this to work. Um, so that's just a craft pen. Let's look at, or a craft feather. Let's look at this one here, which is this pretty partridge feather and, um, pick up a little bit of the India ink. And we've drawn with these before. Um, sometimes we just practice our letters or our spelling words. Um, making maps is super cool. You could do that like on brown paper and you can see that you can shade here. You can draw shapes. I'm going to teach the lines of drawing at some point um, with these. It'll be really fun because of uh, this is how people did it before we had the regular ink pen. Look at that. It's even blending because I've got the black and the red together. Anyway, liquid watercolors work great. The little cups and this little hot dog thing allows it, if there is any spills, it, lay, it catches them. It also is a place to lay the feathers so it's not leaving a mark on the counter. And um, just allowing them to make some marks. When you cut the feather on a diagonal, I recommend you go with the curve of the feather and hold it in your hand because that curve and arcing through your hand allows you to make a good mark. Like this one is actually not good because it really should be cut going this way instead of this is the way it's, it's arcing the wrong direction. Although maybe this is a left-handed feather. It could be. And uh, so anyway, the, the angle sometimes... If it's not facing the correct direction, it's hard to hold on to. And, you, and so um, it wants to roll in the hand. And that's what's happening with this one. It's wanting to roll in my hand because when I cut it, it didn't um, work right. So then what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to take it and I'm going to take a pair of scissors and I'm going to be like, well, really, it needs to go this way and snip it off and try it again. And like I said, that probably would have worked great for a left-hander, but I'm right-handed. And you can see this is much easier for me to, to mark with now. Um, so, um, if a kid has a particular trouble working a particular feather, just have them swap it out for a different feather. Sometimes it's just the angle of the feather or the hand. Um, when you're done, you can give these a little rinse 
um, with a little bit of water um, and get the watercolor off. The ink doesn't, it'll leave a stain, but you can at least wipe it off. They can have a little paper towel or a rag with them to help get some of it off of there when you're cleaning up. But um, these are awesome. Kids love it. It's a really fun activity. And um, I'm using cardstock because it doesn't bleed through, you can see. And um, it, it makes a really fun activity, to, either as a filler or um, a way of practicing things that aren't so fun to practice. So feathers, give it a try.